See that window there? That's DeMarcus's window. That's where he works. He's a good businessman, and he strives to make a lot of money. DeMarcus has been working in this neighborhood for a long time now. For some reason, he never took one of those boats. He wants to, though. But after work, he just sits there and imagines stories happening in the setting around him. Mission Impossible type of stories. Or stories of catastrophic devastation. People falling from the top of those spiraling towers. Marcus likes people who sit down. Because it means they're going to take some time to think about the world or even consider reevaluating their own life. Definitely create a space that um, like all the audience members can see. And so you know, you're hearing this information, you're hearing it for the first time that Teddy has not been good with, you know, keeping sober. And, and that's a problem, you know, and no one can find Teddy right now. I found some liquor bottles in uh, the, the apartment um, behind the dishwasher. And I don't know, Teddy just hasn't been himself lately. That's crazy, Teddy's fine. No, I live with him, I would know, trust me. Um, yeah, he, so, there's liquor, there's been liquor bottle. Do you know what, I'm, well, I'm glad you're telling me this, but, you know, I'm surprised. I haven't, you know, um, I, I thought Teddy was doing good by now, but, uh... Exactly, Teddy's doing good. There's nothing wrong. He's totally fine. He's, he's been going to all the meetings, you know. I mean, she sees him the most out of all of us. I think that she would know. Yeah, that, that's really, really good. Um, Great with your lines, supporting your friend, and I want you to just be a little bit more like kind of not flabbergasted, okay. but surprised because you know he's shown his good side to cool. you. Okay. Why do you always just assume that I'm something has to be it wrong? It was a fifth of Jose Cuervo. How do you explain that? Who drank that? Who else drank that? Teddy's not here. You're supposed to help him. Maybe he had one shot. He's fine. You have a concert to go to. Supposed to help him. Go ahead and start off. Teddy is my boyfriend. He's fine. I'm leaving. Carmen, He's not who you think he is. Um, come back to Marcus. I don't know. What do you think? Um, what do you think of Liz walking to the back door as she tells everyone she's always fancy Teddy? Hmm. I think she can. It just means she doesn't care about how people feel about it. Right. That's good. Always great feedback with you. That's why we love you. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go again. Okay. Let's go again. Um, and this DeMarcus has always secretly wanted to be an actor, but he never had the time to commit. Instead, he comes to see his friends rehearse all the time, and he supports them as much as he can. Of course, at one point in time, DeMarcus had big dreams for himself. Now it's almost as if the city was enough. DeMarcus had settled down just as one soul amongst millions.
Hey, I thought you was going out today. It's been about three weeks now. I tried. I wanted to go buy some flowers of hope, but I just stopped at the door. Are you okay? No. Do you want to talk about it? DeMarcus has been helping his sister cope with her agoraphobia for years now. Now you ask me, what in the world is agoraphobia? It's a fear of going outside. Well, unfortunately things haven't gotten better for her and the confinement made it difficult for them. Still, DeMarcus promised to buy her a new place soon. A place with a garden, just for her, so she could step outside and see the sky. DeMarcus is sometimes required to travel to conventions for his job. This one was for business intelligence performance management. Yes, self-improvement is extremely important to him. He just doesn't like to take the plane. Nobody knows that, of course. You can't show any sign of weakness in this society. see this in anyone else. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. But you just wait and see. Sometimes it felt as if DeMarcus was watching the river, the people, and the world for his sister, more than for himself. Marcus got an unexpected phone call from an artist friend who he hadn't seen in a while. His friend wanted him to pose for a photo shoot somewhere near the Navy Pier for a fragrance company advertisement. To 
DeMarcus, this could finally open the best doors in the world. Doors he had only admired from afar. This turn of events unfolded right after the woman at the airport told him that something good would happen to him. Now this wasn't a coincidence, and he was a little bit upset at himself for not truly believing in her. Those. How was your day? I tried meditation, but the neighbor started working on this wall with a screw drill. Did he do that on purpose? Didn't he know that I was trying to meditate? <laughs> you think I told him that just to make you walk outside? Marcus decided to go out of his usual way for a change. If this strange, peculiar woman was who he thought she was, a sort of fortune teller for the travelers, he would probably see her again. He would even be ready to pay her if he had to. Tell me about my future. Is that something you could tell me? Look, the other day, you told me something about, about me. Do you remember what you said? Yeah. Can you tell me anything? Is, is something going to happen to me? I can't go down there now. He's probably still there waiting for me. Can, can you help me? Can you tell me about my future? The woman told DeMarcus that she knew someone in Hammond, Indiana. Someone who knew something that could help her. His name was DeMarcus too, but she was afraid of going back there. DeMarcus looked at the paper and now feeling uneasy, regretted being there. 
What kind of trap did he step in? And if it wasn't a trap, why was he always the one having to help others? Demarcus hated how his friend said, perfect. He suddenly hated to play this game of perfection while there were so many things left in the shadows of life. The more we are perfect, the more we abandon real life. The more we remove ourselves from the place where diamonds are wounded. Lately, the walks by the river have not been the same for DeMarcus. Maybe it's possible that what you're used to and even enjoy may one day shift and lose its natural appeal. Did you hear about the fire earlier today? How two firefighters lost their lives? I started a painting today of a fire and fireflies trying to escape. Once in a lifetime, you'll have to do something for someone, something out of the ordinary. In order for your life to be fulfilled, or let's just say to find balance. Of course, you can throw the piece of paper away, but it would crumple your whole future.
Yes. Do you know a man named Demarcus? No, sir. Demarcus could have felt foolish to have gotten this far away from his normal life. But for some reason, he liked being here. Hmm. So many things have changed around here. Where are the people going? What are they doing? Do they even know where they're going? I know. I grew up around here. My parents had a house over on Jefferson Street. Hmm. For some reason, the, the trees and the clouds were always strange on my block. I guess it was just my childish imagination. My father was a fire chief. I saw like a, a local hero. And he saved five children from a burning house. Maybe you know him, Mr. Rich. They loved my mom too. She was an English teacher. You know, she wrote a play for her students one time and she wanted me to be in it, but I was way too shy. Years later, one day me and my sis was out playing and we came home and my parents were, they never caught who did it. They came and got us away, took us away from the house. We moved with our aunt in Chicago. I always wondered what happened to my bedroom. And there's, a, there's another child who lived in my house and well, he'd be imagining the same things I was imagining. Mm. When we left for Chicago, never been back. You know, I buried a box of dead butterflies by the Wabash River. Mm. I wonder are they still there? Marcus went back home with some sense of relief. Maybe in the future, he could help and bring his talents to Indiana. Maybe he could be a part of the solution and repair some of the broken world. See, after all, it was himself he was supposed to meet at the bus terminal. Fortune tellers don't exist. They're just there in a corner of our minds to guide us sometimes.